So a fungarium, as Angel said earlier, is a collection of preserved, usually dried fungal specimens. It's the equivalent of a herbarium for plants. You may have heard that term. And many herbaria actually contain fungi. Um, they don't distinguish the, the fungal collections in the herbarium as a fungarium. Um, so um, that's fungarium is sort of a newer term and will probably be used more, but, but uh, there are many herbaria that they're probably about half, they're about 3,500 herbaria in the world and probably at least half of those contain fungi, whether they call them a fungarium or not. Um, it's impossible to determine just how many preserved fungal specimens there are, but the number could be as high as 100 million. Uh, the Q fungarium shown here has about 1 million specimens and it's the largest in the world. The National Fungus Collection, which is maintained by the USDA in Beltsville, Maryland, is the largest in the US. Um, I think it has somewhere between, I don't know, so, so maybe close to a million. And the second largest one is the one that I used to curate, the New York Botanical Garden with about 700,000 specimens. So um, let's see, could we go on to the next slide? Uh, so I, I, I guess what I'll do is I'll just say my part and then you can, we can play the, play the Giuliana Ferci um, section. So, um, the, why do we have the, um, the, it's very, well, actually I'll wait and talk about what we do with them until after. I'll just say that it's very exciting to see the reestablishment of a fungarium at University of Texas because the university has a long tradition of mycological research. Um, Texas has a diverse and interesting uh, mycota, as you know, and, and documenting, and by documenting it through specimens and the data you'll be putting online about the collection, you're not only putting an evidence-based foundation to your own work, but you're contributing to data that can be used by scientists all over the world. Herbaria, fungaria have long been an example of open science, even before we really use that term. They're the evidence uh, for scientific discovery and analysis in the form of actual preserved specimens, and they're made freely available for anyone else to examine to either confirm or challenges, challenge the discoveries that were made from them. So let's go ahead and do Juliana's message. Congra congratulations to the University of Texas on this kickoff of the new fungarium. Fungaria are very important to house the fungal patrimony of a given place. We use fungaria to compare what we find to what has already been found. We use fungaria to further research species that we don't know so much about. Fungaria are spaces for everybody and everybody to contribute with what you find in your unique encounters with mushrooms and with fungi. We mustn't forget that every fungus is magical. Every mushroom is magic. The encounter is a magical coincidence in time and space between us humans and organisms of kingdom fungi that sometimes are only visible for just one day. I invite us all to help build this incredible reservoir of fungal uh, species together with the University of Texas. Congratulations and have a wonderful kickoff. Wow, she really says that well. Uh, there's not much to add except that to say that um, one of the things we can do now that we can't, couldn't do before, there's two things. Of course, we can get DNA out of fungi and we can use that to understand how they're related to one another and also beginning to be with using, you know, uh, high throughput sequencing and genomic studies, we're beginning to get to the point where we can understand what genes control what. So we can understand the genetic basis for why a fungus looks the way it does or where it grows, why it grows where it grows, why it parasitizes when it parasitizes. And that's all very exciting. Also, we now the fact that we'll, we've digitized now most of the fungal collections in this country um, means that we can look at these data in the aggregate and we can study trends. We can begin to assess how fungal diversity has changed over time, how it's changed in a given place, how the relationships of fungi may have 
changed um, in, you know, over time or how they have, may have changed who they're interacting with in terms of their mycorrhizal partners, the, their host predator associations. So the individ each individual specimen is a treasure and a source of amazing information, but also it can, when we consider them all together, we can get a big picture and, and understand you know, global change in fungi.